Hello and welcome back. Lately, I've been focusing on doing nothing a lot. This past year felt crazy overwhelming and I just really needed those few weeks of rest. This also meant taking a break from cooking up complicated things. And so here's some pretty simple, low effort meals that I've been making for myself. Some may seem a bit miscellaneous, but they're all super delicious. This first idea is a sort of cozy yet lazy sesame rice cake soup. To a small saucepan, add vegetable broth powder, tahini, soy sauce, kimchi, this is the brand that I like to use, water, rice vinegar or white wine vinegar, or lemon or lime juice, agave or maple syrup, and then if you wish some additional spices, I did bagel seasoning because I am still obsessed. Bring it to a quick boil and allow it to simmer over medium for like three minutes. This is arguably the best part of the soup, topoki, which are these chewy Korean rice cakes. They come frozen. I bought them from my local Asian food store. That's also where I got the kimchi from. The edamame I added in about one to two minutes before serving. Taste test the soup, adjust it with extra salt if necessary, and that would be it. I just love the, the, the savoriness, if that is a word, that the tahini adds here. If you can't find the rice cakes, you can just substitute them with noodles or some kind of ready-made dumpling, or create your own DIY rice cakes using rice paper. Simply just by soaking the rice paper in water for a few seconds, transferring that to a flat surface. There, you let it sit for a few additional moments until it becomes soft and malleable. And yeah, then you just roll it up. Repeat with a couple more sheets and then cut them into smaller pieces and then add them to the soup. If you are wondering which recipe to try out first, I suggest this one. Miso pasta, you guys. First off, you chop up some garlic. And then to a medium to large saucepan, add some vegan butter, the chopped garlic, and some chili flakes. Turn the heat to medium, allowing everything to sizzle for two to three minutes. In the meantime, Put on some water with salt for the spaghetti or any other type of pasta you want to use. To the garlic, add the miso paste now. Also mix in some water. Add some maple syrup and mirin, aka rice vinegar, plus some pasta water. Give it like two minutes of simmering. And lastly, add some spinach to the sauce and give that another two minutes to wilt down. Yeah, here I'm adding some more spinach. This is the kind of pasta dish where it's not super saucy, but still super flavorful, kind of like aglio e olio. You could also add some roasted sesame seeds like I did here. This next meal, I am absolutely in love with. This consists of orange teriyaki chickpeas, sesame slaw, fluffy rice, and some cucumber. First, cook up the rice. You could also do couscous or noodles of some kind. To make the orange sauce, grab a small saucepan and add some vinegar, soy sauce, sesame oil, liquid sweetener, some orange zest, and some orange juice. Mix and then add some cornstarch next. Mix once again until no lumps remain. Um, yeah, I'm also adding some dried garlic here. Then bring this mixture up to a boil, allowing it to simmer for two to three minutes over medium heat or until thickened. And then you can just mix in the chickpeas and that's pretty much it. For the salad or slaw, I first chopped up some cabbage. This is some Napa cabbage, just cutting it into strips. And then in a large mixing bowl, I placed all the ingredients for the dressing. That would be vegan mayonnaise, tahini, white wine vinegar, garlic powder, some non-dairy milk. And then also to balance out the bitterness of the tahini, I added a bit of agave syrup here. 
combine the dressing and the cabbage. And then assemble your bowl. I'm obsessed with this. Here's me enjoying my chickpea bowl whilst going through some of my French notes. The topic being a conversation about food, how to describe recipes in French. Very much on brand for the channel, I know. I am taking live online classes on Lingoda and they're kindly sponsoring this video. What's so special about Lingoda is their famous sprint challenges. Basically, you sign up and you commit to doing a class every single day for two months straight. And if you follow through and actually go to each one of those classes, you get all of your money back. It's a big commitment, but it is super effective. Just imagine the amount of progress you can make in those two months. There's also a less intensive version of the sprint where you commit to doing a class every other day for two months. And then by the end, you get half your money back. I just really love the online classes. They're super flexible. There's only a handful of other students and you're a certified teacher there. And it's all about pronouncing things correctly and speaking, having conversations. There's new sprints happening every month. You can check the link in the description to sign up for the next one. And if you sign up using the code WINWITHMINA, you get a little discount on your deposit as well. Learning a language is just really about being consistent and celebrating every single small win along the way. I remember when I was in France, I would just get so excited about the smallest interactions that I would be having with strangers. Once I was at a shopping mall in Nice, waiting for my friend to finish their shopping, and I was just so tired and hungover. There was no chairs anywhere, so I decided to sit down on the floor, like in the middle of the mall. Immediately, a security guy ran up to me and was like, Lève toi! And I was like, Mais je suis très fatigué. And he was like, C'est la règle, je suis désolé. And I don't know, the fact that he didn't switch to English, I thought was really sweet. From time to time, I do crave breakfast for dinner in bed. What do you think about eating in bed? No. No. It's a cry for help. Okay. Big time. All right. Here's the recipe for this incredibly lazy tahini chocolate chip three minute oatmeal. Yes. I've been very much on a sesame kick lately. To your bowl, add some small cut quick cooking oats, pinch of salt, some cinnamon, some vanilla custard powder, some flax seeds, and optionally some sugar. Then I poured over some hot water, just enough to cover the oats. Then I sprinkled over a handful of dark chocolate chips, and then I set that aside for two to three minutes. This is going to yield a much more firm type of oatmeal, almost like oat cookie dough. The semi-melted chocolate chips together with the tahini, it's just really good. You could also do peanut butter or almond butter. I spent a lot of my winter break watching The White Lotus because I kept seeing it on everybody's stories and I felt like I was missing out. And I could see myself making a video on The White Lotus at some point. If that's something you would be interested in, let me know in the comments. Perhaps when season three comes out? I don't know. Recently, I made this wintry mushroom and avocado wrap. It's pretty simple, but honestly it tastes quite fancy at the same time. First, you cut up the mushrooms into chunks. And then you also cut up some store-bought pre-roasted or pre-cooked chestnuts, plus some garlic. Bring a medium to large skillet with a bit of olive oil to medium heat, and then add the chestnuts and the mushrooms to cook for about five minutes before adding the garlic, some soy sauce, some red wine or white wine, or skip the alcohol and use a splash of orange juice or grape juice instead. Then add some spices. I would also recommend that you finish this off with some vegan butter, just like a teaspoon, because that really enhances the flavor. And then on to assembling the wrap. To a medium to large tortilla, I'm adding half of an avocado, half of the mushroom mixture. This recipe yields enough filling for two wraps. You can just make another one. I went out the rain. 
Roll it up like so. And feel free to toast up the wrap before biting into it. This last recipe is really simple. I would almost call it a classic vegan toast idea. First, I cut up some smoked tofu. I cut it lengthwise into three slices. And then I pan fried those slices for about three minutes on each side. Meanwhile, I put some whole wheat bread in the toaster. While the bread was toasting, I chopped up some cherry tomatoes. I transferred them to this little white lotus themed bowl and then added some white wine vinegar, olive oil, salt and pepper, kind of like a bruschetta topping. If you're feeling fancy, feel free to rub the toast with a fresh clove of garlic and then spread some hummus on top of that. Add the tofu, the marinated cherry tomatoes, And last but not least, some greens, some tiny greens, microgreens, I think they're called, right? And that is it for this video. Please let me know in the comments what sort of content you want to see from me this year. I think it's gonna be a good time. I'm very thankful for you being here. Also, big shout out again to Lingoda for sponsoring. Check them out, they're amazing. And also, check out my cookbook or cookbooks because the German version dropped in all the bookstores, not in all the bookstores, but in a lot of bookstores. Super exciting. <laughs> anyway, talk to you later. Bye. You like fancy, classy effort. There's no dress shirts in my dresser.